Let's, let's pray and we're going to get started. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We just ask, Lord, uh, that as we, as we uh, come into this fresh new day, Lord, that you uh, just help us to steward it well. We pray, Lord, that uh, maybe anything that uh, has gone, up, gone on in our lives up to this point in the week that uh, might be negative or challenging, that we will be able to either set it aside or just, um, Lord, set ourselves with a new perspective uh, this morning that we can go into this day um, with the anticipation of it being a great day. Lord, we pray that we would all make the most of it and that we would make a difference for you. We love you and thank you for that help in your name. Amen. All right, well, we are in Mark 7 today, Mark 7, and um, I'd really challenge you to read the entire chapter, uh, at least for today. We're going we're gonna to focus on the first seven verses, but really the story goes through uh, about the first 23 verses. Uh, and I'm not going to read all of that to you. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And the tradition I come from, whenever the preacher says, and everyone said, that's your cue to say, Amen. All right? <laughs> You too? Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. Amen. Amen. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, um, this, is a, this is a really um, interesting pa- uh, passage, and, and um, Jesus, Jesus really uh, had multiple encounters like this uh, where he really confronted the traditions of religion. And uh, for the Jews, the traditions of, of the law. Um, and, and so it's, a, it's another encounter with the, with the Pharisees. And let's just read the first, first seven verses, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Then the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled. Oh, my goodness. That is, in case you don't know, they were unwashed. How could it be? The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions such as the washings of, washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Now we're going to stop there, but it is an interesting passage. If you want to, if you want to uh, read the rest of that some point today or this week, Jesus sort of had a knack of doing this, right? I, I mean, I think um, I, I think it's safe to say, looking at other other passages of Scripture, that. Jesus probably washed his hands before he ate uh, on, on most occasions, right? I mean, I, I, I think we could probably assume that. I mean, he washed his disciples' feet. I think they, they, he, was, he was okay with the idea of washing his hands. But, but sometimes Jesus did stuff just to mess with religious folks. Like he, he would do it intentionally just, I think, to be able to shine light on the fact that maybe it wasn't the practice, like it wasn't the practice that they were, they were doing uh, as much as it was the heart behind it. And, and, and so you remember, like, they, they did the, he did the same thing with the, with the Sabbath and, and when he healed on the Sabbath. He could, have healed, he could have healed people on any day of the week, but on... Uh, two or three occasions, Jesus chose the ha- the Sabbath to heal while fa- why Pharisees were around, and I think it was for the the purpose of being able to 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 say to them or, or let them see this and, and 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 challenge him by saying, "How is it you're working on the Sabbath? 
you know, and, and totally disregarding the incredible miracle that just happened. They got caught up on this letter of the law or this tradition, um, and, and Jesus used it uh, as an opportunity to teach his disciples and his followers and to shine light on the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And, um, and, and this is what's going on, going on here. And, and Jesus was just shining light on, on how sometimes um, religion and traditions that were set up really to, to build closer relationship of God really become the object of worship themselves. And when they do, that is a very, very dangerous place. Uh, it, it, Paul, Paul um, had, had similar teachings. If you remember in Galatians when he was calling out um, the, the, the Jews who were, who were coming down really hard on, on circumcision and trying to get these Gentiles to become circumcised. And, and, and Paul really just um, uh, uh, speaking sort of in the same way Jesus did here against the Pharisees, said, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ. By the grace of Christ. Paul was reminding them, listen, we're sort of going back to the, to the, to the letter of the law here when Jesus came and brought in this grace and, 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 and I'm, you've deserted it so quickly and are turning to another gospel, a gospel of works, right? A gospel that is built on what we can do, not what he did. And this is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some of you are throwing it into confusion and trying to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and that, that word pervert that he uses literally means to poison the, the, the gospel. And, and religion and traditions within, within themselves aren't always bad and aren't always evil. But again, when they sort of become the object of worship rather than the tool or the outlet of worship... Uh, they, they become a God unto themselves. And this is what was going on then. And, and if we're not careful, by the way, um, this is what can still happen for us. Right? I, I was a pastor in the local church for uh, 20 years. And, and I can tell you that, um, that in good old America, right, right there, there, there are a lot of people who are more in love with the idea of church than they are Jesus. Like in the South uh, part of the United States where I come from, many times if you ask someone about their relationship with Jesus, um, they, they won't even talk to you about, about their salvation experience. They'll immediately say something like, oh yeah, I go to church over there. You know, and, and, and so for many, even the idea of just going to church, which is good, don't not go to church. But somehow this idea of, of, of church attendance has replaced this idea of, of relationship with God and importance in a lot of people's minds. And so there are still traditions that all of us can have that... that perhaps are good within themselves, but when we begin to put more of an emphasis or a focus on that tradition or that religious expression, it can become dangerous because it, 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 it gets in the way of our focus of God, who that was originally supposed to point us towards. So let's, let's talk about religion a little, a little bit because this is what Jesus was, was addressing here. And, and I've put... The, the caption here, tendencies of religion, because I, again, I don't think everything about the religious experience or the, the traditions that we have are bad. And I, I, I just want to say that again, because I, Jesus was never saying that the law is bad. It was the way that, I mean, God established the law that, that Jesus was sort of... Uh, criticizing the Pharisees for. And so God, Jesus was never saying the law is bad, but the way you've begun to use the law is, is bad. And so sometimes it's the tendencies of our religious or, or tradition, religion or traditions that can sometimes become unhealthy. And, 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 and here's just a, a couple of uh, negative tendencies of religion that we've just got to keep our eye out for and make sure that we don't fall into these traps 
Religion oftentimes focuses on the external rather than the internal. And, and, and here's, here's what Jesus was calling out in, in Mark 7, right? Um, for you, it's, it's become about these, these ceremonies of, of washing the hands. And if you continue reading on down in the, in the passage, Jesus begins to issue or, or address the issues of the heart. Right. And, and so for for the Pharisees, it had become about things that were external, like washing your hands, uh, which is a good practice. Right. Let's all wash our hands. Um, but if the internal heart issues aren't right, it don't matter how you wash your hands. Right. Your heart is still far, far from God. I, I'll give you I'll give you a, a, a personal example of this. Um, of how I, I, I mean, I, I still sometimes struggle with these, these things, right? Um, maybe, maybe you have as well, like at our church here at PICF, um, um, we, do, we do things a little bit different, right? And uh, it, I don't know if you've ever been in this, in this situation, like where uh, uh, the, the church here, takes offering several different ways, right? And so you can give online. They pass the, the basket or the bag around. And, um, you know, we, we choose a, uh, an online outlet of, of giving. Not that you need to know that except for the point of this illustration. When that bag comes by, there's something inside of me that says, if I don't give something, people are going to think... <laughs> Have you ever been there? All right? And so it's like, it's this awkward moment. And then I have to remind myself, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming really religious here and putting the focus on me. Um, it doesn't matter what everyone else might see or what everyone else might think. I know where my heart is. I know, I, you know, I, I know where I'm at. And, and yet there is this external pull to make others see me in a certain light. And, and so I, I say that because that's bad for me, right? I mean, I'm, I'm still fighting those kind of external demonstrations of religion. It's sort of the pull of religion, right? It makes us want to excel in the external without really taking that time to put the focus on the, on the internal. Um, Religion also promotes spiritual pride. In verse 5, so the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? In other words, why don't they do it like us? Why don't they do it like us? Right? And, and boy, this is, this is religion for you. Uh, our way is, is not only the, the best way, but it's really the only way here. And if you're not doing it like us, well, sorry. Or as our Canadians, sorry, sorry. How do we say it? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, so, sorry about that. Uh, um, so, so now that got me off track. <clears throat> See, pride. That's what pride does. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Where was I? Crud. <laughs> that's God getting me back, isn't it? Yes, that, that's what that is. It's spiritual pride. See, that's what it is. It, pride cometh before the fall. That's right. All right. So I have no idea where I was at, but... Religion promotes spiritual pride, all right? So there, let's move on, all right? <laughs> all right. Um, here's, here's some, here's some uh, truths and, and realities uh, about, about these tendencies and the way they, they play out and things that we need to know about them. Um, we, need to, we need to always understand we, we cannot earn God's acceptance by, under, by observing the law or religious traditions uh, in our lives. We just, we just can't do it. Romans 3.20 says, uh, No one will be declared righteous in, the sight, uh, in his sight by observing the law. 
uh, we, we can't do it. No amount of, no amount of good works is going to get you there. Uh, no, no amount of trying will, will, get, it, will get you there. Uh, because the purpose of the law is, and the purpose of our traditions, and the purpose of our, uh, any of our religious pursuits should really have only one, get, one, one end in mind, and that is to remind us or to show us our need for a Savior. Um, because Romans 3.20 says, No one will be declared righteous. Rather, it is through, uh, or, or rather through the law, we become conscious of sin. Right? So, so it's through our traditions, through our religious experiences, that we become conscious of exactly how much we need God. Uh, right? It's, it's the opposite of pride. These things should remind us, Wow, I am nothing but a lowly sinner in need of an amazing Savior. And, and that's what our practices should, that's what our tradition should bring us to a place of understanding of. Um, and, then, and then lastly, our righteousness with God comes by faith alone in, in Christ. Um, the righteousness from God, Paul said in Romans 3.22, uh, comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ to all, to all who believe. And um, I, I just got have a list there of things, and I'm trying to move quickly because I know the bell's about to ring, but of the difference between religion and, and Christianity. And it's, it's so important that we just keep these things in mind. It's what Jesus was trying to uh, show the Pharisees, and I think it's what God wants to remind us of every day. Um, so you can just sort of read through those, but I, I just want to give you one illustration. Last, uh, last night we... Got together and watched some football, <laughs> American football. <laughs> um, and so my, my team from the state in, in America that, that I'm from was playing. Um, and and it, was, it was an amazing game, right? And my team was down the, the whole, pretty much the whole game. Um, and so it, it didn't look very good, but I wasn't, I wasn't worried. Um, I mean, there were, there were times when it looked impossible, but it didn't bother me. The reason it didn't bother me, the reason I wasn't scared is because already in the earlier in the day, I'd already looked at the score. <laughs> so I knew we were going to win. And there were times I was wondering, did, the, did I look at the wrong numbers here? Did I get it turned around? But, but, I, but I knew we were going to win. And so as we're watching this game, I'm able to have conversation with other people. Uh, I'm able to, to watch, and when we fumble or make a mistake, rather than getting all mad, I'll just say, well, eh, it's, it's, it'll be all right. You know, and, and like if I, if I didn't know the final score and that was my team, I would be at a totally different place, <laughs> right? I would be yelling at the TV throwing things in my mind, not physically, in my mind, all right? Uh, I, I, I'd just be at a, at a totally different place, but it's, 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 it's totally different when you, when, you know, when you know how it ends, right? You have a totally different approach. And I think this is one of the big things in terms of our relationship with God through Jesus that we have that religion cannot afford us. Religion constantly reminds us that there's more we have to do. There's more that we have to do. If we want to earn God's favor, if we want to one day be able to stand before Him and live with Him in eternity, there's always more we have to strive for, always more we have to do. We have to wash our hands more. We have to do this. We have to do that. But in Christ, we have been set free from that. And we can go through this life with a confidence and a peace because we know how this thing ends. And that confidence and that peace doesn't come with religion, ex religious expression. It comes only with a true relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think this is sort of the point that Jesus was trying to get through to the Pharisees. You can, you can try and you can try and you can try, but every, every expression is just going to leave you empty if your heart is far from Him. So I just want to challenge you today as we go just to, just to keep your focus on Him.
And the good things, even the traditions and the religious experiences and expressions that you might have, don't discount them. Like we have religious and tradition, traditional expressions in, in our faith, right? Things like communion are, are, are traditional expressions in, in all, of our, all of our faith experiences. They're, they're good. They're good. But remember, they just point us to Jesus. They just remind us of our need for a Savior. Let's focus on the internal, not the external, and let's just keep getting closer to Jesus, all right? Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness, and uh, we just ask you today, Lord, that you would remind us that this is really all about you. It's not about us. Forgive us for times when we put that emphasis on the external. Uh, God, let us stay focused on the internal. As you told the Pharisees, it's, it's the issues of the heart that really matter. And so, Lord, let us keep the heart pure before you. We love you and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Have a good day, guys.